it wouldn't be fair to shout out the extractor without sharing this absolute beast. As you can see, I use it an awful lot and it is just the one. It's just so good. You've got your dry extractor that goes on there. That's your wet extractor. So you can connect your hose to it, which is what I had to do on my last cause, as you can see. Uh, made a mess everywhere, but I'm gonna be using the dry extractor. I'll get my that hose straight in there and uh, it basically just sucks all of the dust out straight through. It's brilliant. So let's get it set up. As you can see, it's pretty dustless. A little bit of a start there. Got that 152 mil coil hole done. I'm gonna put the flu snag on that in a second. And then really the moment of truth. Oh, I can't even see it. Take my goggles off. Oh, there we are. Perfect, just about. We like just about. So I've got a bit of an interesting one out here. You see that I've taken this off. Now, obviously here, what we're gonna have is boiler for condense. We have a D2 for the unvented cylinder and the power tank overflow as well. So where can I get that waste through? Now, obviously this door is staying, um, which wasn't the case originally, but I completely understand why they're keeping it. It'd be really nice if they did what next door did and turned it into a window to make it easier for me, but they want a door. So that's that. Um, I've got my ply in as tight as possible. You can see that I have to take the keys into consideration there in case they leave the keys in. And that's it. So that I couldn't go any wider with my ply there. Um, so I've come up with a bit of a plan. Now, this is just an inspection rodding thing down there um, and I know McAlpine do a fitting that pushes into that with like an inch and a half outlet on. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to break this concrete up, drill through, um, drill through my core hole into there and I'm going to bring an inch and a half waist over up on this pier and then I'm going to core drill through the core, through, through the brick sorry, into the wall, chase it into the wall on the inside and then bring a waste out for all of them. You know what I mean? So um, I'll probably do that in push fit, to be honest. Um, I normally do McAlpine fittings, but um, this, I can't get hold of that high temperature solvent anywhere at the moment. So I'm just gonna do it in push fit, get it through the wall, bring it out. Um, and then that's compliant for all of the D2 stuff. So what I'm gonna do is bring that down in here, in the floor, but because this is a rod and eye that's never been used ever since it's been put in probably um i'm not just going to plumb straight into it what i'm going to do is when it comes through here i'm going to put a um like a well this is my idea anyway i'm going to put a um you know the rubber um fernco couplings i'm going to put that over the pipe and then have it terminate into it so if they ever do need to get to that they can just take the fernco off take that part of the pipe out. This will obviously will be cemented in and then they can rod through if they want to. So I'm not sort of, I'm not nicking that completely. So um, yeah, gonna do that. Um, Cause we're renewing the waste and I don't fancy digging around the stack and trying to cut the pipe when that's there. It's a lot easier to deal with than that. So I'm gonna do that. And it's obviously on this side as well. So it's not so much chasing in either. So that's my plan of action. Right, let's get this flu in. But I don't know where else my core drill is. I don't know where to core drill this quickly. Yeah, let's core drill this quickly into the wall. So I'm just going to core drill it as far in as I can get away with. Probably just above this skirting. So I'll probably come an inch or so. And then that's plenty of height for the D2 for the unvented cylinder. Oh, my next thing is whether I'll put the boiler here and have the pipework here, or put the boiler in the corner here and then have all the pipe like this. I think I might do that. I might stick it in this corner with enough just to get the side case off, utilize all that space there, and then have, or I might just bring it off enough for a double socket, like a little socket. 
next to it or whatever. I don't know yet. But yeah, I might do that. Then I can bring all the pipework down across and I can also utilize that space for pipework above the door if need be. So anyway, that's a lot to think of. Let's just do this for a minute. So yeah, let's core, drill that through and and then we can chase it out at a later date. But for the minute, I forgot to say, I'm just gonna put, because um, I wanna get this boiler up and running for them, I'm just gonna sit the condense into a uh, bucket for the meantime. The main thing is I've got to rerun all this pipe work, so let's get cracking. So what I've done there, put the extension piece on. I went as far as I could. Ooh, let's turn the camera that way. I've gone right down, right down into the depths. Just a bit smoky in there at the minute, but I basically took it as far as I could through the wall, and then that'll just save me chasing this side. So it's in there, in there somewhere. So what I can do is measure it all, put a mark there, and then I can just carry on chasing just this little bit here rather than the whole, all of that. So um, just got to find the right bit, but I'm sure I can do that with a bit of measuring, make sure that's all right, get my laser out. And then, uh, yeah, like I said, just carry that through and then we're good to go. Um, in fact, I might do that today. And I don't have to put a condense in the bucket, do I? So I could just get that in temporarily. Now that's done, I've drilled it through. One thing I can't stand is mess. Oh, that's better. So, I'm gonna do, I've got that right through to there. Before I put my core drill away, I measured how far the core bit went through. Took it through and it stopped there. So roughly there. Um, that's the height of it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, cause it went up slightly, I'm gonna punch a hole through there and then I should be able to break away exactly where the chase ends. I'm guessing it's gonna be about there somewhere or about there or something. But if I went in the middle, I can find the middle of it and then I can carry on a bit further and then bring it up. So that's that. Oh God, I hate mess. So then, if you haven't seen these, what have you been doing? Living under a rock. Been out ages now, but just in case you haven't. Um, this is the pipe snug, but this is the flu snug. Originally, they just bought these out for 110 mil sole stack and inch and a quarter, an inch and a half. Um, and then they were like, hang on a minute, we could do flues as well. It's a great idea. So um, it's part L compliant, which is the main thing. Um, we've all got to be adhering to part L, haven't we? So. Um, it's as simple as that. You, you drill 152 mil core hole and then you push it in. And when you push that in, then your flue goes in there and it's completely airtight and sealed. It's perfect. It's the easiest installation you can you can do practically. And on the outside, it'll be finished perfectly. So yeah, they're wicked. They're well good. Um, I've been waiting for them to bring out a two inch one for forever and I still haven't done it. So come on guys, get a two inch one done and then you've got the full collection, haven't you? So anyway, let's go. Now bear in mind I went and got an MRI scan done on my back not too long ago. It probably isn't that clever. Oh, I found out that I broke it once upon a time. My L5 is seized into my pelvic bone and my L4 is completely cooked, finished. Good news is, look at this. Yeah, right, it's so easy. <laughs> oh, yes. So the boiler's on the wall. Got my flu snuck in there. Got my flu snuck in there. Now that would have been an absolute nightmare. We've got this roof in the way try and make good of that. So that's where them flu snugs are brilliant. Just got that in, been brilliant. So, now that's done, what I'm gonna do is send, I think all of them up, all of them up like that, up out the way. I know I've got gas there, so that'll do for the minute. Um, I know there's a rad up there too. Reason taking them all to up here. 
is that I know they've got veins of water up here because of the washing machine. And then when I sort of push this out of the way, sort of found this one. I'm praying that's a hot pipe. That'd be bloody fantastic. So instead of moving all this stuff out of it, I'm just gonna put a cut here, get that one up, and then hopefully I can see a hot and cold there. So then I've got gas, and then all I have to do is bring heat in around, which I know is here. So as long as I can tap into the heat in here somewhere, we'll be good to go. Um, yeah, so right, let's get this cut then. Oh. And then I'll have a little look. So, right to there now, got all that through. We're just soldering all of these up. Um, so I can use that for a minute. Let's put them as on for a minute. I just want to flush it. And um, I can use my flushing point to do these two. It's nice to be there. Sort of the drain and the, uh, the, uh, that's a bit of a template supply in. Once these are sold, definitely boom, what's there? And yeah, I can go upstairs and get that piped up, so. So. There we have it, perfectly chamfered all the way around. So we've got the far ledge off. So it's perfect, so that's that little tool I used. The Metabo CC18 LTXBL brushes. That little blade in there, but it's a treat. And then the cutting that bit, just a pair of Rothenberg of 50mm cutters, and you just sort of squeeze it over. That was a little Todd's top tip from back in the day, and obviously just a file just to take little bits off. So we're ready to go, let's go pop it in. So that's all done, I'm gonna sold it up. It's all tight, done, ready for flushing. So, got my cockles on now. <laughs> let's cut this flue. Oh, there we have it, that's the flue in. That's all clip on there. Nice fall on it. Perfect. All nice and finished and airtight. Just how we like it. 